So I recently started a new game of Minecraft and I decided to be smart with some mining. I found a lot of emerald ore, like this lovely one here, and I decided to write down where they were located. You know, you just press F3 and you can get the location that you're at there over on the left with XYZ. Um, and I decided to write down where they were located so I could return later because Minecraft has this neat um, pickaxe enchantment called Fortune where you can get multiple emeralds out of a single ore like this. And so I wanted to come back after I had uh, the fortune enchantment. Well, after digging a big sprawling mine, I finally have the fortune enchantment. Now I'm ready to return to my mine to collect the emeralds that I've waited for so patiently. So over here in this text file, I've written down the locations of these emeralds. So again, these are the X, Y, Z coordinates. I made some other notes about uh, them being near a, a, a zombie spawner. Um, this is one where I found three clustered together. Here's one where I found two clustered together. And as you can see, I've got quite a few locations to return to now that I've got my fortune pick. The problem is I don't know what order to visit them in here in my, in my sprawling mine. So for example, right around the corner from this emerald ore. If I just go down these stairs and around a corridor here, um, there's another emerald ore over here. So I've got those stored uh, as separate locations in my text file. And I don't wanna come get this one, gallivant all the way to the other end of my mine and then have to come back over here to get the one back in that direction. So I wrote a code to help me sort these emerald locations into clusters. So what I'd like to be able to do is take these coordinates and uh, have a computer tell me which ones are nearest each other. Now, if you're at all familiar with computer programming, this probably sounds a bit like the traveling salesman problem, but this is actually a lot simpler than that. I don't really care about creating an optimal path between all of these locations. That's more computationally intensive than I want to make a program, and it's more than I actually need. I just want to know which locations are near each other so that I can collect the nearby ones in one pass. So this is the code that I created to accomplish this task. Uh, this code is freely available in, at the link in the description below. Um, the way it works is uh, starting here in line 16, you use this function called add to tell the program what coordinates you're interested in mapping together. So these are all the coordinates that, uh, that I've collected for where my emeralds are. Um, and then down below, it starts to sort these things into clusters of nearest neighbors. We'll take a look at how the code actually works in just a minute. I want to show you what the final result is um, to kind of uh, entice you to, uh, to follow along with the code. So I'm going to run the program by pressing Control 2 on my keyboard. Uh, that'll open it up in a new window. And you get two outputs. One of the outputs is this text down here that shows you the clustering of nearest neighbors. So within each of these square braces, you get a set of coordinates inside the angles. There's X, Y, and Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And so it's telling me that these three emeralds are close to each other. These three are close to each other. These two are close to each other. These two are close to each other. And then I get a cluster of one, two, three, four, five that are close to each other. Um, and so what I can do is I can take that and make that sort of my, my shopping list or my travel plans for which emeralds to visit uh, within each trip that I take. Now, of course, it's also helpful to visualize things. So what I have up here is a 3D rendering of all these locations. And if I just right click, I can rotate. So here I've got little cubes representing each of those emerald locations in three dimensional space. Um, so the, the, the coordinates of these cubes are given by the coordinates in the vectors here and they're color coded based on their cluster. So for example, that big cluster of five uh, around X equals, between X equals 230 and X equals 266, uh, that's gonna be the cluster of five. It looks like that's the five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's these five pale yellow ones here. So these are color coded so that I can tell kind of where the clusters lie. So this is a pretty close together cluster. This cluster is kind of spread out, but it's nice and in a line. So I could probably make this one pass within a single uh, within a single corridor in my mind. And then I've got a cluster of red back there that are really close together. So let's take a look at how this works. Uh, the code is not that long, it's just over a hundred lines. 
Um, the first thing we have to do is uh, get the size of the region we're working in. So all this little chunk does is look uh, uh, among the, the points that we're going to sort. So this is all of the points that we're interested in that have our emeralds. Um, what it's doing is it's picking out the maximum X value, the minimum X value, maximum Y, minimum Y, maximum Z, minimum Z. So this loop here is drawing a 3D cube around all of these emeralds and telling me how big that cube is. The next step is to figure out who each emerald's nearest neighbor is. So nearest neighbor means on my map back here, uh, each one of these cubes has a cube that has the shortest distance between it and another cube. So for example, for this uh, metallic cube here, its nearest neighbor is this metallic cube in the middle here. And this cube here, its nearest neighbor, is also this one. Now this one in the middle is only going to have one nearest neighbor, and judging by the view, I'm guessing it's this one. So what this sorting algorithm does here between lines 51 and 61 is it sets up a list of nearest neighbors. So each element in this list is gonna be one emerald's nearest neighbor. And basically what we do is we loop over all of the emeralds twice. So here we loop over all of the emeralds looking for their nearest neighbor. Here we loop over all the other emeralds um, to check for which one is their nearest neighbor. And basically the way we do that is to calculate the distance between each point. So this function calculates the distance between point I and point J. And if that distance is less than the current minimum, then it replaces the nearest neighbor value with J and it replaces the minimum distance with the new winner for minimum distance. And then at the end of all that loop, whoever is, is left with the shortest distance is that particle's nearest neighbor. So this just tells me who everybody's nearest neighbor is. But what that doesn't do yet, it doesn't set up this cluster yet. All it does is set up a one-to-one -one relationship. Actually, it's not one-to-one, -one, excuse me. That just sets up a simple relationship between uh, each point and another point to be its nearest neighbor. And by the way, we're also checking to make sure that we're not checking one point against itself. A, a single point cannot be its own nearest neighbor. That's what this little if statement means here. So the next thing we have to do is start evaluating all these connections. So for example, uh, to go back to our set of three here, you know, these two are nearest neighbors to each other. So they're already in a set together, but we need to add this guy to this whole set because this one also has the central one as a nearest neighbor. So we actually have to do two things. We have to connect these two points and then we have to connect these two points. And for an even more complicated cluster, like our cluster of five, we've got to make sure that we have a connection between all five of these, so that we end up with a connection among these, connections among these, connections among these, but no connections between this cluster and another cluster, or between this cluster of five and this cluster of two. And we're going to keep track of all of that in a matrix called am I connected? So am I connected is going to be a matrix, which means it has two labels. It's going to have a label I and a label J, and basically, if your entry equals zero, then it means I and J are not connected. They are, they are not part of the same cluster yet. If entry equals one though, then I and J are part of the same cluster. They are connected. And so basically what we do in this first uh, loop here is we're checking for whether I and J Ha, either one has each other as a nearest neighbor. So what we're doing is set up this matrix is we're saying if I is the nearest neighbor of J, or if J is the nearest neighbor of I, then you're gonna set that entry equal to one. So this makes I and J's connection mutual. If I is connected to J, then J is also going to be connected to I. But of course that's not enough because we need to be able to connect everything that is connected to a given point, right? So you can imagine if you have, uh, I mean, we don't even have to imagine, we can just visualize. So you imagine you've got um, these five here. Well, this one is going to have nearest neighbors, this guy and this guy, and these each of these is going to have nearest neighbor of the one in the middle. But these two on the outside, their nearest neighbors are the two kind of on the wings here. And so we need to get connections built among all five of these. I need for the computer to know that all five of these belong in the same set. And so in order to do that, we set up another loop. This one's going to be what's called a while loop. A while loop is useful for if you want the computer to repeat the set of instructions an undetermined number of times. So up here, I knew how many times I wanted the computer to repeat the loop. It needs to repeat it for every point in the list that I'm trying to sort. But down here, I don't know how many times it needs to loop. So we're setting up a logical variable called change. And change just keeps track of whether any more connections were added in the most recent process. 
So the way this loop is gonna, is gonna set up new connections is it's gonna check for connections between different pairs. So in order to do that, we now need three levels. So we have I and J, uh, the labels that we had before. We need a new label K. So basically what we're doing here is we're checking if, if, uh, if point I is connected to point K and point K is connected to point J, then that means you need to connect point I and point J. So that's gonna override that value with one. It's gonna add a new connection. Now, by the way, you notice we're never setting a new connection equal to zero. We're never going to break a connection. The connections are defaulted to zero and we only add more. What that means is that as we loop over lines 80 to 92, as we go through this cycle over and over again, we're only going to increase the number of connections. If the number of connections ever doesn't change, then it means we didn't add any more connections and there's no more connections to be added. So that's why we're keeping track of the number of connections here and we're keeping track of the new number of connections. So this is the number, so n is the number from the previous loop, new n is the number from the current loop. And basically we evaluate change as whether new n connections is not equal to n connections. So if they're not equal to each other, then yes, we did have a change. Change is true, and we need to keep looping over this while loop. But if these two are ever equal, it means nothing changed, and there's no more new connections to add. That means change will be false, and we can exit this loop. So the last thing we need to do, the one and only last thing we need to do, is to display the answer, right? So we do a little bit of housekeeping here. Uh, we remove the duplicate list from Am I Connected? Because what this is gonna do is it's gonna make a whole bunch of of lists or rows within am I connected equal to each other. We only need to access those once, so this is just removing those duplicates just so we don't get duplicate outputs at the end. And then down here, starting in line 101, we give the answer. So this little print statement just signals that we are at the end and we have the final answer. Uh, we create a list of points to show. So this is list of points in the current cluster that we're showing. And basically what we do is we add to that list all the points that are connected to the original point that we're looking at at the beginning. So we're looping over point I here, we're looping over the other points J here. We're saying if they're connected, then you add that new point J to that list. And then here, we just print the list of points. So this is your instructions. This is your, um, this is your output that says, here are the sets of points to visit in one, uh, in one trip. Um, down here, we have our visualization. So this box command, creates the 3D visualization. Um, we select the colors randomly, so the COL variable is just a randomized RGB code. So in vPython, you can create colors either by saying color.red, color.blue, or you can give it an RGB code as a vector here. So this is just ensuring we get different colors for each cluster, but that the points within each cluster get the same color. And we place that box at the position that we're currently investigating. And then at that point, we are done and we get our lovely map here. Now, of course, I could make this a little bit better, couldn't I? Because currently, it's hard for me to tell which set from down here is, uh, is mapped up to the set that goes up here. So uh, to wrap up the video, I want to add one other thing. I want to make a label. Uh, the label is going to be at the center point of this list, so I need to calculate the center of the list. Uh, so let's see, I'm already looping over the points in line 112. So we're gonna set center equal to vector 0, 0, 0. So the way you calculate an average is you initialize the uh, value to be zero. Then we just add to it center equal center plus the current position P. So average is the total divided by the number. So we just take center equal center divide by the number of points we're dealing with, length list of points. Cool. So I can now have a label there, and now I need to get a number for this thing. So let's make that, uh, uh, let's call that IL. So this is going to be the uh, number of the current list, of the current cluster, excuse me. And let's see here. So I need to change that for each cluster that we go over. So here we're going to have, let's see, let's put that, where do I do the printing? I do the printing up here. So I need to update that number here. So I'm only gonna update it if, the, uh, if I'm printing out a list of points. If I'm not printing out a list of points, then it'll skip over this whole section here. 
So let's see, so we're gonna increment that here. We're going to add this to the print statement here. Let's even add in a little text. And you know what, let's even make this even more uh, easy to read. We'll call this cluster, there we go. So we'll call this cluster IL colon, and then here's your list of points. And then what I can do is I can say here, text equals IL. So this is gonna create a label at the center of each cluster with a text given by this number. I, at least I think that's what it will do. Let's see if I got the syntax right. And I did, cool. So this tells me that cluster one is the one over here. So I know that those uh, dark green points are, let's see, cluster one is at 218, 12, 542, 201, 13, 552. So when I head in that direction of Minecraft, I have a visual idea of what that cluster looks like. It tells me cluster two is the one that forms kind of a line here. So when I'm headed that way, I know I need to uh, basically carve a channel this way. For cluster number five, huh, that's funny, one, two, three, four, five, five items in cluster number five, perfect. That tells me I need to be ready to dig around and loop around a little bit here. Um, so yeah, so this helps me map out the cluster even better than I had it before. So uh, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this was a fun project to work on. I'm looking forward to diving back into my mind and digging through this. Again, this code is freely available for you to use at the link in the description below. All you have to do is copy and paste it into a new file on glowscript.org, change the coordinates that are here at beginning in line 16, um, and uh, just run the program and it will produce a similar output for you. If you find a better way to make this work, please let me know in the comments below or tweet me at Let's Code Physics. Or if you find a scenario, an arrangement of emerald ore or whatever you're hunting in 3D space that this doesn't work for, if you manage to break this program, please let me know that too so that I can start fixing it. So again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.